Hi, I'm Lars and this is my land. In my land, I get to do pretty much whatever I want. Today, I just wanna take a minute to talk about Sinead O'Connor and I really hope you'll listen because she's worth it. Sinead O'Connor tragically passed away on Wednesday, July 26, 2023 at the very young age of 56. She had a profound impact on the world and on my life and this is why. I've spent a little bit of time looking into this incredible woman's life. There is so much that I cannot cover in this video and for that I am sorry. On October 3rd, 1992, a 26-year-old bald Irish woman named Sinead O'Connor went on SNL. She was slated to perform two songs from her upcoming album, Am I Not Your Girl? Instead, she performed an acapella version of Bob Marley's War while tearing up a photo of Pope John Paul II. Oh. Fight the real enemy. The studio was silent. There were no boos or applause. Lauren Michaels said that he felt the air leave the studio. She was looking directly at the Catholic Church, taking them to task on covering up years and years of sexual abuse of children on national live TV. The Pope would not acknowledge the abuse for nine years. Over the weekend, 900 calls pour into NBC. Only seven of them defend Sinead. The next week, Joe Pesci hosts SNL. He's holding up a repaired photo of the Pope and then goes on to say that if this was his show, he would have smacked Sinead. Because if it was my show, I would have gave us such a smack. <laughs> I would have grabbed her by her, her eyebrows. His monologue is on SNL's YouTube channel. Her performance is not. Frank Sinatra calls her a stupid broad. Madonna eviscerates her in the press for a while. Two weeks after this, she's scheduled to perform I Believe in You at the Bob Dylan 30th anniversary tribute concert in Madison Square Garden. Chris Christopherson introduced her to a full stadium. I'm real proud to introduce this next artist whose names become synonymous with courage and integrity. Ladies and gentlemen, Sinead O'Connor. A lot of them were cheering, a lot of them were jeering. Sinead goes out and she stands there, posed. She says, thank you. She waits for the crowd to die down. It doesn't, it continues. And the longer she stands, the more vehemently angry the crowd gets. The music starts a couple times, but she shuts it off. Chris Christopherson comes out to her, puts his arm around her and says, don't let them bastards get you down. And she says, I'm not down. And then she goes on to sing an acapella version of Bob Marley's War. <laughs> The stadium erupts mostly in furious screams. She finishes her song and walks off stage and begins sobbing. Chris Christopherson comforts her. His support of her has never wavered. It was very courageous, you know, it just seemed to me wrong booing that little girl out there, but uh, she's always had courage. He actually wrote a song about her called Sister Schnee, which I really love and I suggest y'all go listen to it. It's really, really good. This, this is a music channel. So Humanly responded all over the world, condemning that ball headed brave little girl. <sighs> Sinead was misunderstood by so many people in this world, but he was not one of them. Sinead's career never really recovered from this and she never regretted it. She said, I feel that having a number one record derailed my career and my tearing the photo put me back on the right track. The photo of Pope John Paul II was her mother's. Sinead was incredibly open about her childhood. She was abused by her incredibly devout mother, physically, mentally, verbally, emotionally just awful. In her memoir, Remembering, she talks about when she went to go get the photo. The day her mother died, she and her siblings went to the home and she took the photo down from her mother's bedroom wall. It was the only photo hung in there. And she said, my intention had always been to destroy my mother's photo of the Pope. It represented lies and liars and abuse. Sinead went on to have a difficult life, but one that she's never apologized for. And she never stopped speaking on exploitation. She had a particularly poignant message for Miley Cyrus during the Wrecking Ball era. It's appropriate for 20 year old women to be asked to lick sledgehammers in, in videos for songs that have no lyrical reference to, I would see as an exploitation of somebody who's possibly a little too young to understand the dangers of allowing oneself to be exploited in that way. Her 17 year old son Shane took his own life in 2022. I don't think I have a good way to navigate this conversation. I think the most appropriate way is to allow Bob Geldof, a very close family friend of Sinead's, to explain it for me. It's a troubled soul and it ekes pain in an attempt to find an understanding through 
through her voice and through her music. The pain gives rise to a great anger, which may not be understood at all. People don't quite understand the intensity or how a personal pain translates into a sort of empathetic rage. The point is, you don't have to. You can just listen to one of her songs. On a personal note, the reason why I'm able to cry and show emotions in my videos is because of Sinead. The reason why I believe crying is strong and beautiful is because of her. I actually consider that part of me to be like very honest and real and I don't think I would have that bit of me without her. Before I go, I should remind us all that mental health is health. It is important. Check on your friends, check on yourself. Don't be afraid to speak out if you're scared of what's going on in your head. We love you. Nothing is worth your life ever, nothing. For quick and quiet annoying memos, I've been working on a video essay on the TV show Lost. It'll be out maybe next month or maybe next year or sometime in between. I'd love it if you'd like and subscribe and all of that jazz, but that's really not the point today. Thank you so much for visiting my land. I love y'all so much and y'all come back now, you hear? Bye. My sweet Lord. Mm, my Lord. Mm, my Lord. Lord. But it takes so long, my Lord. Lord. My sweet Lord.